today we have special guests, Hashim and Zinga from the New Black Panther Party. Welcome, welcome. Brother Tali, we, we, it's great to be at WAEN TV Studios. I'm glad you uh, called us out. <laughs> great, great. It's an honor to have you here. Mm-hmm. Talking to him backstage, my man has a lot of history, a lot of a lot of jewels. <laughs> yes, sir. A lot of jewels. We almost didn't make it on air. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, um, well, I guess we could start off the New Black Panther Party. How did it begin? How did it come about? Wow. Good question. The New Black Panther Party started in Dallas, Texas. It was a young brother named Aaron Michaels and a brother named David Foreman and a brother named Robert War Williams. And... On Martin Luther King Boulevard in Dallas, Texas, they rented some space in the library. And uh, Harry Newton got in their bones. <laughs> and they decided to rebuild the Panther Party. They started off as the pa- uh, uh, the Black Panther Party. Right. They got sued by David Hilliard, which used to be the chief of staff for, uh, for a brother, Harry Newton. So they had to put new in front of the Black Panther, and they did. And at that time, I was running an organization called Myot mm-hmm. in that same library. I rented space. Oh, wow. And this is in about 1989. Mm-hmm. This right here is the 20th year anniversary of the new Black Panther Party. And in um, that library, I went in and out of that library every Wednesday. They had their meeting on Wednesday. I had my meeting on Wednesday. And I was running, like I say, MIA, which meant African American Think Tank. Okay. And my organization grew tremendously. We outgrew the library. We had over 100 and some members mm-hmm. after about a year. Mm-hmm. And the Black Panther Party, New Black Panther Party, had about seven or eight members. Mm-hmm. But that seven or eight members would meet every Wednesday. <laughs> and I would watch them. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if you knew uh, the history of the original Black Panther Party, which started around 1966, mm. but it was over by 1971. Right. The original Panthers had been killed, chased out of the country, jailed, or they just had to flee their posts because Hoover started something that we had never seen before in black America, which they called COINTELPRO. Mm-hmm. And he demolished those brothers. But from us looking at their history and their accomplishments, we're their cubs. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to carry on their great work. And so some people get it mixed up a little bit, Brother Talib. They mm-hmm. think that, you know, everybody want to put a Black Panther patch on their heart. Mm-hmm. Well, if you study the Black Panther history, the Black Panther patch over your heart is like a target <laughs> in this country here. So only real men and real women put on this patch right? because you become an instant target. And uh, so going back Mm -hmm. to Aaron Michaels, uh, to give you some backdrop that a lot of people don't know, these guys worked hard, and they went through a lot of ups and downs. Well, it came a time in around 1994, 95, where a man named Dr. Khaled Muhammad came on the scene. Me and Dr. Khaled Muhammad was in Riverside, California. And Doc had did a speech in Riverside, California, as Dr. Khaled Muhammad, former F- Supreme Captain in the Nation of Islam, former national spokesman of the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Somebody tried to take Dr. Khaled Muhammad's life in Riverside, California. Five of us were shot, including me and Doc. Wow. Well, in the hospital in Riverside, as I sit there with two pistols, and Doc was in the bed, and people thought it was kind of comical. He was shot in the leg, but that bullet had hit a main artery, and Doc was seconds from dying. Wow. And Doc's body was so clean, mm. when, they, when they put him to sleep to do the surgery, we almost couldn't get him to wake back up because of the gas. His body was so clean, the gas overtook him. And I remember when Malcolm was assassinated in Harlem. I remember the doctors giving the report that Malcolm's body was so clean, the doctor said it was the cleanest body he ever seen. Wow. 
Well, that's how Dr. Khaled Muhammad body was. And, and that foreign so. substance going in his body, we almost lost him twice. Wow. But when he came to, mm-hmm. he didn't under, he didn't know where this assassination attempt had came from. Mm-hmm. And so me being from Dallas, working with the new Black Panther Party, and the way I worked with them, my out would bring in people like Doc, people like John Henry Clark, people like Amos Wilson, people like um, Betty Shabazz to speak. So when we would bring them in, we would get the new Black Panther Party to help us do security on these people. Oh, okay. And the Nation of Islam. Mm-hmm. So I knew Ern Michaels and the party well, but I wasn't a member. So when Doc came to, uh, he told me he really didn't know where the hit came from. He said he couldn't he couldn't figure it out all the way. He knew his life was in danger. I mean, he was the first man that the United States Senate and Congress tried to silence and take it take his right to speak in America. Right. So he knew the the, the uh, this animal machine was after him. It wasn't like he was shocked that he was shot. Right, right. He just wanted to figure it out. Right. Who did it? So he looked at me and he said, "Take me somewhere." And I don't care where you take me. Don't even tell me where we're going. Mm. So at that time, the only place I could understand, I mean, I could take him was to Dallas, Texas, because I knew it was some seven men there with shotguns right. and would use them. <laughs> so I took him to a sister house named Cheryl Smith. Mm. She's in uh, Dallas, Texas. She teaches Paul Quinn College, and she's a strong sister. And uh, we took them seven Panthers and some more brothers from the think tank, mm. and we protected Doc Life, and we got him some black doctors. Now, let me say why I'm saying that. Mm. At that time, the New Black Panther Party was a national organization with local leadership. Doc was suspended from the Nation of Islam at that time, so he was a national leader with no organization. No organization. <laughs> so he got suspended right after the King, King College, College speech. speech. Right. I met Doc 1994, April 1st. And and I brought him in to speak for Mayotte. Oh, okay. And his speech was, um, Elijah, Malcolm, Farrakhan, Khaled. Is history repeating itself? And he made it clear that day to that audience in Fort Worth, Texas, that he learned from Malcolm that history is not repeating itself, and COINTELPRO and the same things that existed then that exist now, but it's more technical and more vicious toward us was not going to send him to war with the nation or Minister Farrakhan. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was his speech. But anyway, that union of two or three weeks with him and the Panthers every day in the room together, mm-hmm. Doc eventually became the chairman of the New Black Panther Party. Mm-hmm. And then he went around the country and all of the uh, brothers and sisters from nationalist groups, from pan-African groups, from the nation that really loved Doc, they started to come on board. And that little seven-man team, Doc took that, uh, like Malcolm did the nation, Doc took the New Black Panther Party from two or three chapters to 33 chapters around the country and around the world. Wow, wow. That tells you the brother has a lot of power. The brother has a, a lot, lot of power. power. Now, I mean... The layman terms, I guess the layman folks out here might not know too much about the Black Panther Party. Um, And the few that have heard, I mean, Black Panthers do have somewhat of a negative, um, I guess, feel about them with regular common folk that just walk to and fro that might not be into the whole, um, you know, trying to save black people or help black people. You know, they just go to work, come home. So to those people that might be watching... Uh, explain to them what is really the purpose of the New Black Panther Party and what is the New Black Panther Party trying to achieve? Well, first of all, out of respect for our national organization, let me just say this. Dr. Khaled Muhammad brought into existence a manual, a manual with over 100 and some pages. And this manual, this manual, if I gave you one today, you could start a Black Panther organization in your city. It teach you how to do meetings. It teach you the 10-point platform. It teach you the, the 10 objectives. It teach you how to do flyers. It teach you how to set up a meeting from front to back. It teach you how to go out and what they call in the nation fish for members and all of that. But we got to speed up if I can come back to your question. Under that foundation, 
Dr. Khalid Muhammad made his spiritual transition in 2001. And now the New Black Panther Party for the last nine years has been under the leadership of Attorney Malik.